about the Amnicon with the release of .NET 10 not too far away or right behind us, depending on when you're watching this. I want to talk about all the breaking changes of .NET 10 because there are a few in this version that might directly affect you, so you should know about them. Let's just take a look, and I'm going to start with a very interesting one, which has to do with the iWebhost interface and the web host builder. Now, this can apply to projects up to .NET 9. So even the last project, depending on how you update it throughout the versions, this might be you. This is a .NET 10 project. I'm actually using the fully released version of .NET 10, even though it's not really released. You can find it if you search. And as you can see now, the iWeb host is obsolete. So it's deprecated, obsolete. It will potentially be removed in the future. You should be using the iHost. So every new project now in .NET should be doing this by default, it's iHost. And instead of using webhost builder, you would be using the web application dot create builder dot build. So if you're using the iWebhost, you should move to the iHost instead and whatever applicable host you're using, whether that's your own hosts or any other host. Distributed hosts from Aspire use the same thing, so there's no reason why you wouldn't move to something like this. This is particularly a breaking change if you're using the treat warnings as errors parameters. So if you have something like this and you like treat warning as errors true, then trying to build something with warnings in the project will make the project fail. Now, in this case, I don't want to have it, but if this is you, then this applies to you. And something else on the same uh, idea of treating warnings as errors, doing .NET restore to restore your NuGet packages for a project will audit transitive packages by default, meaning that if you're treating warnings as errors, then it will fail the build. If you have it as part of a pipeline, be careful because your build might fail for something that might not be directly obvious. Now, I haven't really talked about this for a while, but I do want to mention that at Dome Train, we have released a crazy amount of content, both free with our new free tutorials. There's actually an AI one that's really, really nice. You can just go and watch it for free, as well as tens of hours of new content like AI agents in .NET, how you can use them, building an entire AI chatbot with RAG, caching an eight hour course on that, covering everything from L1 L2 caching, hybrid caching, and everything between Signal R, solution architecture, as well as migrating all .NET framework, ASP.NET APIs to a new ASP.NET Core. Tons of stuff, and you can get them for 40% off with code UNLOCK40 at checkout. So put a link in the description, check it out. That's it. Now, another one that can be really, really tricky has to do with the new field keyword we got. Now, it's not impossible that up until now, .NET 10, there's so much code out there that you might be using the word field as a backing field, something like this. Now, because the field keyword was added here as a contextual keyword in a getter and a setter in, in these properties, then in previous .NET versions, so not in .NET 10, but if this was in .NET 9, for example, I don't think this will work in my case. Yeah, I should and have an error, but that's fine. You get the idea. In this case, field over here is the same as this, the same as this, the same as this, because now we're setting the value field and we're getting the value field from this backing field, many fields. But in this case, it makes sense because it is a football field. So it you would name it like this. This is not a bad name. So if for some reason you name the field name field as a backing field, then you have to be careful. Thankfully, there's a warning saying that, hey, in language version preview, the field keyword binds to a synthesized backing field to the property. To avoid generating a synthesized backing field, refer to the existing member this field or add field. So if you wanted to have and maintain the same behavior, you'd have to go and do this. And in this case, now you're actually mapping to that old field. And this is a breaking change, by the way. This is actually the reason why this feature has been delayed for so long because Microsoft is just too scared of breaking uh, code bases. Or you can say this dot field. In both cases, this would fix the problem. If you're not careful with this, then, you know, in this case now, field is the field, the backing field. It is not this. I know it's confusing. I will make a dedicated video for the field keyword as well. If you want to see that, actually leave a comment down below and let me know. And I will do that. Um, this is probably one of the most dangerous ones, but actually a very unlikely to happen. But this is like a true big 
break in change if you have code like this. It will fundamentally change how your code works. The last thing I want to show is that if you actually wanted to use the async enumerable class in C Sharp, you actually had to go and say system.link.async and you had to add this uh, NuGet package, which has tons of millions of downloads, 272 million downloads. And by adding that, you would get access to the I enumerable class. By default, this does not exist in .NET 9. However, now if you upgrade and you have the package, well, it's going to be confusing because updating the .NET 10, this is now built in system.link. It is no longer in system.link.async. You don't need a separate NuGet package. You don't need anything else. So if you were to have the package, let me just quickly go ahead and add it, then you're going to get an error saying, uh, where am I supposed to get async enumerable from? Is it supposed to be from system.link.async enumerable? And which one of the two is it supposed to be? Because you still have both. So it's it's really confusing. You'd have to remove that NuGet package. Now it is built in because there's value in having the async enumerable built in. That doesn't really affect the interface. The interface is still the same. This, this still existed, the abstraction. But now it's about the implementation of having an async enumerable in .NET. Those are really the big ones. There's another one which is uh, span of T and read only span of T now have more implicit conversions. So depending on how you've structured your code, that might cause an issue. I think it's unlikely this would happen for a couple of reasons. First, not many people use spans, but also even if you do, if you're using it with a var keyword or depending on a use case, um, this might not really be an issue for you. Then there has been talks that the, um, if I do make directory and I say demo, if I go to CD demo, then there has been chats that if you do .NET new solution, the solution generated would be the new solution format, the SLNX, which is the new um, XML format. However, this is not what I'm getting. It might be that you need to do something like, I don't know, format SLNX. Well, I'm probably going to have to to make a new directory. Let's say make their uh, demo one, CD demo one, and then do that. No, it doesn't work. So I, I can't recreate this with the current released version I have. It might be that the SDK that my CLI defaults to is the .NET 9 one. If I do .NET list SDKs, then you'll see I do have .NET 10 installed. So I don't know exactly what's happening here. In any case, expect that to be a thing when you install .NET 10 in your case. In any case, that's all the features that I think are worth talking about, all the breaking changes I think are worth talking about. Leave a comment down below if any of them affect you, because in my case, they do not. Maybe the span, I have to go and take a look. I don't really treat warnings as errors, even though I probably should. So I really want to know from you. Leave a comment down below and let me know if any of them affect you. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.